You gotta get a water. No, never mind. Strain out the sea monkeys. We're good. Revelation chapter 2. So I think last week I had an idea to start. I was actually started in Revelation again, and you see the, the seven churches Ephesus, Samarina, Pergamus, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, Laodicea, and uh, all of them have uh, applicable. Applicable, what? How do we say it? Uh, applications. They all have applications. Some are uh, historical, right? And it's uh, the futurist perspective. It's the preterist. Things have already taken place. You got the historical. It's still yet to come. Uh, they are, they're actually they're actually applicable towards the tribulation time period itself. So our responsibility is to read, to, to study, to rightly divide the word of truth, to make sure we know how it's applicable to us in 2023. All right, so when I started looking at the characteristics, originally I thought, well, I'll just knock it out in one service, and that, ain't, that don't happen much at all. Uh, and so then I broke it down to Ephesus, you know, per, you know one, one service per church, and that didn't necessarily work either. That kept going. I would say this about your Bible. Your Bible, you can go as far as you want with it. Right? You could be very superficial with it. You could pretend like it's not applicable to your daily life. The, the way I would look at my Bible reading, I'm reading stuff that happened in the Old Testament, New Testament, and I want to know how that applies to me today. And so you would look at David and Bathsheba, and you would say, what's bad? Don't do that. And then you would say, well, what was good? And, and, and let's do that. So it's all that. So we'll look at the churches, all right? So we'll look at the churches. Let's, uh, let's pray. Father, thank you again for your son. Thank you for Victory Baptist. Pray, Father, for a good Wednesday night. I pray that scripture will be clear to understanding. Pray, Father, that you would help us interpret what needs to be interpreted. Pray you'd meet with us, of course, and uh, we we ask that your will be done. And uh, with all that being said, pray that you come soon, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, so let's look at it like this. So go to Revelation chapter 1 and uh, we talked about the charismatic movement and I'm going to go back and touch on that a little bit more um and we'll 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 see where that goes and where it goes it, it went from it goes into this set of papers it went pretty far out there so we'll, we'll see revelation chapter 2 and look at verse 1 he says unto the angel of the church of ephesus write these things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks i know thy works and thy labor and thy patience, and how thou cannot bear them which are evil, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hath found them liars. So, so, so this church right here, the characteristics one, and we'll get into that a little bit deeper as we go on, but there's the labor factor of it, right, in verse 2. There's the patience factor uh, in verse 2, and then... It's uh, the ability to be able to discern. So uh, as a Bible believer, uh, when everybody gets all excited about certain things and trends and, uh, you know, uh, let's see, what would be a good one? The, the promise keeper thing or, I don't know, the charismatic movement, of course, and uh, all sorts of different trends that go on. The purpose-driven life, you know, what was his name? Rick Warren, I think it was. Yeah. And I believe there's parts to those. Uh, what, what I would draw the line is that I believe that all those responsibilities come from the local church. So what you got going on these days, instead of the pastor in the church doing whatever needs to be done within the community, it's these other organizations that are coming around and they're, they're meeting with different churches and then they're setting up these different organizations and different, different ministries and stuff. 
uh, a homeless ministry, if you were ever to have that, this is my perspective on homelessness. Number one, in America, you don't have to live homeless. You don't have to be homeless in America. What, what you'll do if you've ever experienced, uh, you know, if you ever talked to some of these people, there's probably three levels to the homeless situation. I'd give you that. But if you talk to a lot of them, a lot of them, knowing that there's a shelter up the road, they're not going up the road. I mean, why, why is that? Well, they're, they're not willing to do what these guys say you got to do in order to have a clean bed, sheets, a bath, a shower, or whatever, and some clothes because there are rules involved. And you can't bring your bottle of gin in with you. And uh, some of them, if you're drunk at the time of admission, they won't let you in. So this is what you, every homeless person, would have, what a situation would be, number one, hopefully get saved. Number two, amen, go find yourself a good old Baptist local church, or uh, I would say Baptist, King James, uh, independent Baptist, Bible-believing Baptist, and behave yourself. And you'll find that there are individuals here, we're, we're more than charitable, charity edified, the Bible says. But what happens is you get all these needs going on, and you don't want the responsibility. You don't want, you're not putting any skin in the game. You just to give me this, and I've had homeless people. You know, they'll cuss you out. They'll, they'll, you know. And I don't take, I don't take it personally. It is, it's kind of what it is. Anyway, uh, it's like you. You have needs too, and they can be met. This church is designed to do that. I think, I think that's part of that. It's uh, verse two. It's thy labor. It's what we do. It's what these, these, the, the church of Ephesus is noted for. They're noted for their patience as well. Uh, God's long suffering. Your ability to be able to put up with each other should be be part of your Christianity. It could be should be part of your walk. Amen. Uh, don't give up on the guy to the left of you, or to the right of you, or before you, or behind you. I know what the temptation is, especially me. I got a bad habit of that. Uh, you know. Anyway, I get into it. Amen. All right. Let's focus in on Thou hast tried them that say they are apostles, and of course in the Bible. Uh, Psalms chapter 26 verse 2 uh, you're, to, you're, to, you're to examine yourself you should be uh, used to a 52 face up way of doing business amen and don't be surprised if somebody in a Bible believing work comes up to you if you're looking crazy or you've disappeared or you've ghosted uh, the ministry for a while for them to make little comments or or hopefully they, they're praying for you or they're reaching out to you and uh, there's an adult level responsibility of course you just just simply be where you know to be and that's fine. Also, when you're not in the church house, there's still an obligation for you to eventually learn to feed yourself. That's that if, if, if the local church is the only time that you're around other Christians or it's the only time you're opening up the Bible, well, I don't know how you, you, you wouldn't go three days without eating and drinking water. <laughs> uh, you wouldn't go weeks without without any kind of nourishment and so I would encourage you and it's nothing new coming from this pulpit learn to examine yourself Psalm chapter 26 verse 2 says examine me O Lord and prove me and try my reins in my heart now that would be your honest Christian uh, these these uh, church members here these uh, these from the church of Ephesus uh, they've tried them would say they're in that 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 mode there and that level of Christianity to try the spirits the Bible talks about amen but where does the judgment start it starts with you so I was in the bathroom earlier and I, and I was in the mirror you know and, and, and washing up and doing whatever and I thought man I'm gonna put something in on the mirror you know and to say no doubt the problems with you or, or you found the troublemaker amen, amen. and uh, it's you it's your your responsibility to be and do and, and say and, and, and repent and not do and say and hold study all that stuff, but it starts with you, John chapter six, verse six. And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Jesus Christ will prove you because being God that he is, contrary to the, the latest trend, amen, he's really not, uh, or is he? I, I really can't wrap my whole head around all that. But I'll know this, know this, rather, for he himself knew what he would do. The Lord knows what, what, what's all in your heart. He, he knows why you show up. He knows why you don't show up. He knows why you, you tell people about him, and he knows why you don't tell people about him. They, he knows why you do what you do, and he will make no mistake about it. Uh, 
He'll do certain things to prove it, to get you. He'll put some pressure on you, man, to see because, you know, we, we talk a lot. We, 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 we're pretty visible, and I think that's okay, but, but Lord's in the proven business. He's, he's going to try the word. That's what Psalms 12 says, correct? Oh, then, then he's going to try you, amen? And, and know that's just part of your walk. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 21 says, Prove all things and hold fast that which is good. First John chapter 4, 1, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Amen. So if you just read these verses, and, and there's more to it, but for sake of time, we won't just go into examining yourself. But Paul says examine yourself. There's just so many options out there. There's so many, there's so many, and you know, and the world will call them choices, but that's Bible too now. You know, uh, uh, you, uh, if you make stupid choices, you get stupid prizes or whatever they say, you know. It's the reality of it, and you scratch your head. Well, well why don't people reach out to me? Or why, why aren't people allowing me? Or why, why can't I do a certain something? I, I, don't, I don't know. Uh, what are you doing or what are you not doing? See, that, that would be on you. The benefit you have as as a husband or a, or a wife, a spouse, is that hopefully you got one that can talk to you like you probably need to be talked to. And they can be honest if you have a relationship, and unfortunately there are those relationships in America today that it's like uh, the old, the old, the old uh, I love Lou, you know, they're sleeping in separate beds. And... Uh, uh, they're sleeping in separate rooms. They they almost have this 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 relationship. This uh, uh, how do you call it? Uh, uh, benefit. What do you call it? Uh, convenience. Right. They're doing it convenient and convenient level of convenience in that I couldn't live in a house like this by myself. So we stay together because of the level of convenience. Now there is character involved in 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 in, in a marriage. In that you heard uh, accounts and stories about. How people back in the day, the divorce rate wasn't close to what you got today, and and it would be that yeah, there might have been a reason to divorce, but because of the kids, or because of you know their obligation, or a, again during if you've ever been to a if you're married, you know somebody asks you the question, do you take this person? Uh, they'll tell you the the ups and the downs for better and for worse. For richer and for poorer, and then he'll give you the preacher there will give you an opportunity to say yay or nay about it and give her a yay or nay, and then actually open it up to the crowd. I don't know that I've ever seen that to where if somebody said no, don't do it, dude. Look at him, look, please, you're making a big mistake. Now your family probably feels that way. They probably had their side conversations. Uh, we certainly had ours, hey, amen. Uh, anyway, so, uh, and then you say, I do, and you kiss the bride, and you get the cake, and, and, and everybody celebrates, and, 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 and then there's this term that comes around called an annulment, and it's like, what the heck, man, you didn't even, annulment, that's not even making it through the first year, and they act like they just never said anything. Well, those are truce breakers, amen. And those are your characteristics of these last days. Uh, either, if that's the one, be it. Be that person for them. For, for thicker, uh, yeah, it's for thicker, yeah. better for worse. Better, thicker, thin, thick and thin. <laughs> Tough times, easy times. You know, it's like being a Christian. It's easy to praise Jesus Christ when everybody's healthy. When, when your contract has all been negotiated and you get free company cars, hey, Jesus is great. But what happens if he says, you know what, I might move you out of that job. Man, man, let me just take that job from you, get you a little closer to me. You're rubbing, yeah, that, that happens. I, I'm like the guy that I could write a book on how to get fired. But anyway, uh, <laughs> that's what it is. All right, look at Mark chapter 13, look at verse 5. Mark chapter 13, verse 5. So we as Christians, just like this church of uh, Ephesus, well, we got to be willing to try things. And, and what I mean by that, obviously, is to prove them. And what's good, keep. What's not, throw out. Amen? And uh, there's this spirit out there, make no mistake about it, this charismatic, this Jesus revolution. And uh, this Sunday, I think uh, I've been working on this uh, Lonnie Frisbee character. I talked about him last week. I talked to him, talked about him. I didn't talk to him, or did I? Uh, he's dead. He died of grids. Grids is gay related immune deficiency syndrome. That's what Lonnie, old Lonnie, his lifestyle caught up to him. He was a sodomite. Well, if you've, you've heard about this Jesus Revolution deal, it's about a Baptist pastor 
who was struggling at his church, his daughter who was a drug addict that had gotten saved, amen, runs into this hippie, you know, uh, it's either Frisbee or Charlie Manson one out there, and uh, Ch uh, Charlie Man, uh, probably the same spirit. Um, uh, the, 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 the American preacher, the hippie preacher, he says America, they call him the American preacher, and that's absolutely correct. The, w the way this guy got saved was, uh, you know, or his revelation was, was uh, well, on LSD. So why not, you know? That's Christians, they're all drinking anyway, they're all doing dope, they're all doing their thing, and they're sodomites, it's okay. Uh, anyway, it's, uh, and I'm gonna probably bring a message on that. Oh, he was a false prophet. But sadly, it was a Baptist that brought him in. And the Baptist guy was struggling a little bit with attendance, and this guy, man, uh, you know, I guess there's a way to increase your, increase your pop population or your crowd or your congregation. We ain't, we ain't gonna do that. <laughs> I, 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 would, I, would, I would probably be killed. And uh, the Lord will kill me, man. It, 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 I don't even, see the, the good news about me towards you is that you will never have to worry about that because I hate that. I, I honestly don't like a lot of what's being presented as Christianity. I think it's sappy. I can't see myself, you know, falling on the ground, speaking, babbling in tongues, and, right. and you know, the slain in the spirit. And even, even those non-denominational jokers that are out there that claim to be following a Jesus, although there's another Jesus, that's right. probably who they're following. Uh, they don't say the Jesus Christ revolution or the Lord Jesus Christ revolution. They say the Jesus revolution. Well, that's... 2 Corinthians chapter 11, that's another Jesus. There's another spirit. Amen. There's another gospel there. Uh, the Bible warns you about stuff like that. Mark chapter 13, verse 5. And Jesus answering them began to say, Take heed, lest any man deceive you. Which means just because somebody makes you feel good. Uh, sister, because somebody makes you feel good. Brother, because she makes you feel good or that circumstance makes you feel good. That Bible says you need to take heed. Why? Because there are many deceivers out there. Uh, I saw the, uh, the, the response to this Jesus Revolution deal. I made a little video deal. And, uh, you know, they, they say, uh, 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 I'll, I'll see if I kept that. Let me see. I'll read this thing here. Now, again, mind you that this uh, Frisbee fellow was a, a homosexual while he was preaching at the same time. That's it. So here's one. Uh, concerning this uh, homosexual LSD uh, fueled <laughs> preacher, uh, the American preacher, which is correct. Uh, amazing movie, inspiring and heart touching. My husband puts it as one of the best movie he's seen, uh, and that's saying more than you know coming from him. Well, sister, you got sound like you got a sorry husband from both ends, man. So Amen. she's thinking that that he's a reprobate when he's watching, you know, whatever God God forsaken movie he's exposing her to she's probably a christian sappy christian at that because she figured that this jesus revolution thing changed the man well brother i promise you this if, if you ever get a text from a bunch of drug-fueled uh, lesbians talking about how they enjoy our preaching here at, at victory baptist something something happened something something happened it, it ain't it ain't coming from here uh, we'll be in Romans chapter 1 for a while, and, and you can't be a lesbian or a sodomite and read that and smile because it's telling you what a reprobate that is. And then you just get rid of all the doctrine and not worry about it. Here you go. Five stars, family friendly and uplifting. I would recommend it for everyone. Great movie. Are you searching for hope? A lot of people are. They're searching. Go see this movie. Wow. So what is that? That's America. That's, some, that's, some, that's what's going on with Christians uh, all over America. Uh, it's the, the guy that plays the role of, of the Baptist preacher fella. I've seen a couple of interviews of him. He ain't talking about being saved. Matter of fact, he said he was meditating and somebody gave him the script. And he just wanted to do something that was meaningful. He never mentioned Jesus Christ died for him. He never mentioned, mentioned that, you know what, my I, I received Christ. I started reading the script, and I realized how wicked I was and how wicked Hollywood was, and I repented and got saved. I trusted Christ the best way I knew how. I had heard about this Jesus character before, but until I read that script, until I read about Lonnie Frisbee, I didn't really understand who Jesus Christ was, but I do now. He's my personal Savior, and I can't wait to see him. So that ain't happening in the interviews. 
And then, you know, you just get all caught up in that nonsense that went on with that. And it was the Calvary Chapel movement, of course, that's non-denomination. That's a Baptist guy that, that, that because of the influence that these quote-unquote hippies brought in, can a hippie get saved? Absolutely, man. Can a drug addict get saved? Absolutely. Can a sodomite get saved? Yeah, absolutely, man. Anybody, whosoever will, let them come. The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. I got it. I was talking to a, a Mexican fella. I was uh, cruising around on Monday and, you know, saw pray for uh, pray for Alex in Azure. Uh, I, I, there's a pretty cool house right up the road, very nice, it's kind of where we pass tracks out, and there was a crew doing the landscaping, and, uh, you know, I passed out tracks, that's what I thought we do, so I did, and talked to the Spanish fella, and uh, he was, he was, uh, he was very receptive, you know, he said he'd been in jail a few times, and, and uh, although he didn't claim he was saved, he was telling me everything that sounded like he was saved, and I'm, I asked him, I said, you know, you sound like you 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 were in print, and he's he's talking about you know the gospel and stuff. And I said, so back up in there in cell block eight, <laughs> murder roll, whatever you were at, you never trust you trusted Christ. You sound like you did. So I invited him to to church. Why? Because that's 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 what we do. We 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 win souls, and that's what God does. But uh, yeah, I cut back on the LSD use. Amen. <laughs> and uh, yeah, anyway, that's. But that's the world today. That's that's what we've accepted as the new, the new norm, as they call it. Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse three. What? I don't know what you're saying. You can text me. I get the message if you want. Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse three. Let no man deceive you by any means. So Mark chapter 13, 5 says, take heed that no man deceive you. But then Paul says, by any means. So that means there's a devil out there that has all these devices and has the ability, I guess, by any means to deceive you. So if it's not, if it's not from her, it could be from him. If it ain't from him, it could be from her. If it isn't from them, it could be from that. Why? Any means. So... Could it, could it possibly be Hollywood? Could it possibly be some kind of script with an with a unsaved guy? The, the, the Lonnie Frisbee character in the Jesus Revolution is the Roman Catholic mystic that plays the role of quote-unquote Jesus on the Chosen, which that could, we could just teach on that one too. Now, anyway, no, 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 don't do it. Don't do it, do it. Uh, verse 3, let's go, let's stick with the text. Let's see what we can do to stick with this text here, right here. Because this uh, is interesting, because this isn't typical for me to be able to get through this. I'm going to try. <sighs> Let no man deceive you by any means. For the day shall, shall not come except there come a following way first, and that the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. So, so there's going to be this 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 deception but it doesn't come without a falling away and i'll show you in the definition of this charismatic movement and we'll probably go back to second thessalonians because it's it's connected with the signs and wonders and these miracles that everybody's so excited about these days and here before i forget let me just tell you do you know in acts chapter i think it's acts chapter 2 when the holy spirit came on these guys at pentecost do you remember the process you know there is a sound of a mighty rushing wind? Yeah. Okay, so this is very easy. If, if you run into these, these Bible-rejecting Jesus revolutionaries, uh, and they start insisting that they're into all these signs and wonders, and especially these tongues. See, the tongues in, in Acts chapter 2, they were actual languages. And then they just, just scrambled everything like they do, you know, who, who, who cares about doctrine anymore. Uh, they go to sec, or 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and they, they, they say those are the unknown, well, one's unknown tongues and one are languages. And, and this one here in Pentecost, it was preceded, preceded before it happened by this mighty Russian wind. So the next time your neighbor talks about her Holy Ghost temple celebration church, I, and they ask her, so do you, you speak in tongues, let alone that she's a female, and there are no females in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 that are talking in church. He says that about his wife, but that's really not that. She can, she can say something, I guess, in church, talking about that. And at the most, there's three people. One's interpreting. 
and it's for those that don't believe, not to them that believe. So if you just get a little Bible, you find it so very easy. Uh, that's why here, when you bring in your nonsense and stuff, if your heart ain't right by the time you get up in here, you're going to have a problem with it because we're going to hit it like with a hammer. And uh, we're going to call it like it is, and, and that's, what, that's what that is. Uh, but ask them. So you speak in tongues. So before you did that, you heard the wind blowing, and it'll be just like the Jehovah Witnesses, like in Revelation 7 and 14. You can ask them what tribe they're from, and they don't know that. And then you got this, you know, black lady here, about 800 pounds, and she's going to tell you about being part of the 144. And ask her, well, how, how can you possibly be one of the 144? Hey, you're a female, and they're male virgins. And they all come from from specific Jewish tribes and right. like but again they don't care either it's just like a, a Bible believers these days you could be a Bible believer in name but be a be a Bible believer in practice and then and then when they don't line up you don't have to fellowship with them you could say no if you'd like I, I do you right. losing friends that way I'm okay I got I got good friends uh, you're my friends you're, you're my friends second second Timothy chapter 3 verse 13 he says but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. So as the time goes on, amen, you get closer and closer to this Jesus Christ character coming back for his bride, which is really what that's all about. The father going to say, go, go get your bride, son. And uh, before she makes a bigger mess out of everything, in later scenes. And so this says here, there's no progress here. The charismatic movement is going to tell you that things are getting better. And they'll go to the Old Testament, like in the book of Joel, and talk about the Holy Spirit, you know, being manifest and stuff. And that's funny because the holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost, I think the Bible says. And it would be the same spirit that's supposedly being poured out on all these charismatics or whatever. And uh, it, it doesn't line up with the book the Holy Spirit wrote. The Holy Spirit wrote the book to help you and guide you uh, for all uh, 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 the teachings and uh, for correction, instruction, and righteousness so that the man of God might be thoroughly furnished unto all good works. But it ain't lining up with their experiences. Ask them next time so you don't have to spend a lot of time. Ask them about that mighty Russian wind thing and watch them look crazy at you. Right? First John chapter 3, look at verse 7. But there'll be evil men and seducers, and they're going to wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. So characteristics of the last days, you, are, you could be deceived. Now, hopefully it ain't you. Why would you allow it to be you? You at least know that there's the Word of God. You know it's the King James Bible. You know all the... For the most part, you could look at a sign up here or this little chart, and you can, you can relate to it, amen? You can go back to that table and know that there are these gospel tracts that are, that, are, that are in need of being placed in somebody's hand, and, and you could go out on the street, you know, or, or go to the men's home ministry and do your thing, and, and it, you shouldn't be the one deceiving, but, but be careful because there are these means here that Paul talks, and he says you're not to be deceived by any means. But you could be deceived because that is the characteristic of the last days. First John chapter three verse seven says, "Little children, let no man deceive you. And he 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 that doeth righteousness righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous." You want me to help you with like minimizing your temptation or 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 minimizing your possibility of being deceived? Do right. Do do right. Stay in the book. If you got a Bible believing husband. Not many. Heck, if you got a Bible even wife, ain't many. The classic Pentecostalism movement usually traces its origins to the early 20th century, with the ministry of Charles F. Parham and the subsequent ministry of William Joseph Seymour, and the Azur no uh, Azusa or Azusa Street revival. Its unique doctrine involved a dramatic encounter with God, termed baptism with the Holy Spirit. The evidence for having received this experience was interpreted by some as speaking in tongues. But now can you determine what these tongues are in your Bible? Yes, you can. Look at uh, 1 uh, Corinthians chapter 1. Look at verse 22. Now actually go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and then go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. So anybody that's American, you say, well, we got these tongues and these wonders and these signs. Oh, okay, really? What are they? 
He said, oh, we speak in tongues, all right? So you have a Bible. You can go. The Bible says, to, you know, study. And you were able to answer. You should be, right, to a point where you can thus say it to the Lord. You got the ability to be able to do that. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 22. Wherefore, tongues are for a sign. Not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. That, that's who it's for. So who are the signs for? There's, there's two categories. First, well, what are they for and who they are for? Or who they are not for? First, they're for a sign. How do you know that? Well, because we can read, and it says for a sign. Now, who are they not to? They're not to those that believe. Those are your Christians, but to them that believe not. So, there's that. That's, that's all there, there is to that. Now, I won't get into the rest of the characteristics, but again, there's no more than, than three people, one talking, one listening, and one interpreting. So you can just go to the Bible, 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Now you're going to need to do a little homework and study that thing out so you don't look crazy and stutter all the time. But practice. If you got a spouse, you got a friend, you got me, I'll talk with you a little bit before I fall asleep. And, and, and we could practice and do some role, whatever you want to do. But there's no, there's no substituting the experience. And I, I do my best as your pastor to set up opportunities for you to go talk to these people. That's why, Mikey, you need to get back into that Thursday deal, Friday deal or something, because I saw you, I saw Manny and, and, and Kyle, and when we go out there, you know, I'm doing my thing, but, but I'm also watching you do yours, and, and it's your experience of talking with a Muslim. And we had that already. And the experience of talking with the Jehovah Witness, the experience of talking to these silly charismatics that don't know any Bible. And if the Jehovah Witness or the Muslim know uh, what they're trying to talk about, they typically know about eight verses. That's really all there is to that. And they, they believe, believe you me, when, the charis when you see them uh, Jehovah Witnesses out on the street corner over by them bus stops, right. those ones that are out there, if there's usually two, and uh, out of the two, there's going to be one that knows what they're doing. Right. The other one's usually a novice, and they're not really sure about what's going on. I ran into one when I was cleaning my wife's vehicle, because uh, I don't have one. But anyway, I use hers, and uh, I handed her a track, and she was Spanish, and she told me she was a Jehovah Witness. She didn't talk to me. Had she been versed and been one of them seasoned elders or whatever they're called, she would have probably been able to say a few things. I didn't know Spanish, so I, know, I went back to the vacuum. Anyway, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, look at verse 22. So it's very simple. The tongues movement can be refuted by, number one, asking them in Acts 2, so, so that's you? And they're like, yeah, Pentecost. Although that same experience in the Pentecost prior to Acts 2, they didn't do that. The Pentecost, the Pentecostal experience after that, that, that experience in Acts 2, it didn't return. So then all of a sudden in the 50s or whatever it was, and these, these revivals, it just showed back up. So what you need to know about the history with all this nonsense, again, uh, these people in the church of Ephesus, they've tried them which say they are apostles and are not and has found them liars. So the Acts, the book of Acts, do you know what the Acts are? It's in your Bible. I don't know if that's the scripture part or just the title, but it's called the Acts of the Apostles. The right. It's what they did, not you. Right. And matter of fact, as far as the signs and wonders, Paul's signs and wonders, uh, it, it went away. Matter of fact, he told you to take a little wine for your stomach, say, and then Tremophius, I think his name was, he right. left sick. So that was dirty. <laughs> if he had the power to be able to do that, well, that was kind of mean. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, then you take them here. You tell them, man, that tongues are for a sign. So who requires a sign? Verse 22. For the Jews require a sign. Greeks seek after wisdom. So there's that. And, and if that individual that you're able to show or say or talk with, first of all, you should do like the whole Nehemiah prayer stuff. And when you have an open door, you should be praying with these guys. Praying to the Lord, rather, for this conversation you're about to strike up. You're going to feel uncomfortable. You're not going to feel like wanting to do it, amen. You're going to come up with excuses why, you, why if they start. If you're at work, brother, and these conversations pop up, you know the answer, go ahead, man, jump in, try it. Amen. That's, that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to be a watchman, by the way. Amen. Okay. And the more you do it, the more comfortable you are. 
when you pull yourself out of the workings of a King James Bible believing ministry, you pull yourself out of that rotation, you pull yourself out of the practice of it, right? Then you're going to get grow cold into it. And then you're going to come up with excuses of why it's not for you and blah, blah, blah. Before 1955, the religious mainstream did not embrace Pentecostal doctrines. 1955, why was that? Your King James Bible was still prevalent. Matter of fact, not just any Baptist, because the King James Bible isn't a Baptist book, per se. It's a Christian book. It's the Word of God. It's the Holy Bible. It's, it's all those denominations and stuff. The Methodists, the Presbyterians, the Baptists, you know. Uh, they all used the one book. And up to that point, 1955, so I would tell you, with all you patriots and all this stuff, and, you know, the skulls and the AR-15s and the Making America Great, you know, you're the last time, the last glimpse of any remnant of a quote-unquote strong America when after World War II, you, the, the country of America, you produced about 80 to 90 percent of everything that was produced. The reason why Nazi Germany lost the way they lost is because they lost their ability to produce. Uh, England wound up being in debt because they couldn't produce anything. Russia, that was a mess over there. And uh, what you see now today, sadly, is that that has gone away. And those people that you fought with, like Germany and Japan, they're the ones with, with all the productivity. Those are where your German cars and your Japanese cars and the Chinese are doing their things. And really, what you get for siding with British England for the second time? They lost their empire, by the way, after World War II. See? And... Uh, France, like what do you get from them? French toast, French you, you didn't get nothing for everybody. You lost all them lies to help protect. You know, uh, you right. should have just joined up with the Axis, man. We may still be making cars. So. Anyway, before 1955, the religious mainstream did not embrace Pentecostal doctrines because there are people still preaching. Amen. So ask yourself, well, if back then nobody fell for it, well, why is it now? Well, I'll show you, and it shouldn't be anything too new with that. If a church member or clergy openly expressed such views, they would either voluntarily or involuntarily separate themselves uh, from their existing denomination. So if you came into the church and all of a sudden you, you're Mr. Christopher Columbus and you got this new doctrine, this new fire, this strange fire there that nobody's heard of, amen, and then you start trying to trace back this big gap in the, in the Pentecostal deal in Acts chapter 2, then you were asked to leave because there were people in that church that would know you're 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 that ain't of the Bible. They knew. They knew first first Corinthians fourteen twenty two and they knew first Corinthians one twenty two and they knew all about uh, the context of chapter fourteen and, and they also knew Acts two. And they knew that there are these seducing spirits and doctrines of devils and they knew that there was a falling away. We know that too, right? Well, how does it affect you? Well, we're, we're small in number. Why? Most people can't endure sound doctrine. These last days, they're all about themselves, and we'll, I'll show you. All right, go, to sec, go back to 2 uh, Thessalonians and look at chapter 2. Go back. Now, this is the Signs and Wonders crew, and it's very prevalent today. Everybody, if you notice, the, the trend today is uh, the non-denominational movements. But, but this is all being traced back to this uh, Lonnie Frisbee guy, this Calvary Chapel. That was a Baptist preacher who allowed this seducing spirit to, 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 to come in in the form of this Lonnie Frisbee, actively engaging in homosexuality throughout the week. And, uh, hey, but he made everybody feel good on Sunday. Amen? Uh, Baptists do that too, though. They just are on their TV and all that, and they're, 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 doing, the exact, they're doing the exact same thing. Anyway. Get old. Look at us. Mm, I don't know about that. Second Thessalonians chapter two. Look at verse one. Second Second Thessalonians chapter two. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. What's the theme? What are we? What are we making sure everybody remembers? I'll try to tell you if you're listening. So get you get you off your blessed assurance, Amen. Uh, Jesus is coming. You know, I don't say soon anymore. I just changed my my way of saying it. He don't say it soon. Look, now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Soon. Now, he doesn't say that, so I don't say soon no more. And by our gathering together unto him. What is that? The gathering together? That's the rapture. See, so the rapture in your Bible. It's right there. All right. Anyway, 
that ye be not soon shaken in mind or, or, or be troubled, neither by spirit, because there's another spirit out there. See? And today's Christian, instead of being bold as a lion, the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, you're, you're flaky. I can't again, you know. Again, one of your one of your characteristic as a Bible believer, Amen. Uh, I mean, if you're new to the game, maybe not so much, but it's your uh, dependability, brother. Your your uh, your one of your greatest abilities, your dependability. If if we can't count on you, I know I don't mean to get you nervous on that one. Uh, if we can't count on you to be where we know you're supposed to be, see, see, when we present something, we know why it's being presented. We know that these dates are what they are. Uh, I, I find it interesting that, that a lot of Christians over the years, they always get sidetracked or blindsided by things that have been discussed week after week. It's been on print. It's there. Now, when's, the, when's the revival? What is it? Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Wait. And, you know, what, what do you do? So, so you got this weird spirit here uh, that, that it's going to affect the Bible believer today. In verse 2 he says, That you be not soon shaken in mind. How easy it is, nor, 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 neither by spirit, uh, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. You know what the day of Christ is a reference to? It's your rapture. There's the day of God and all that stuff. But that one there is talking about the rapture. How do you know that? Verse 1. And so what happens is, leading up to this rapture, the average nine, mindset, if you're not careful, is you're, 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 like, you're just like an unreliable car, man. It's like, uh, yeah, sometimes it starts, sometimes it don't. But don't you know what's wrong with it? Yeah, are you going to fix it? Not really, not today. I, eventually, though, I do want to get, because I need my level of reliability, I want to be able to be counted on. Will be the soldier, cause, cause if you're not, then that's what's going on. And then going back to everybody's gonna come to you about discovering America, about this Jesus revolution. You're just gonna look silly, and sadly, worse, you you're not gonna be in a spiritual condition to be able to speak up. And you're the only one there. The rest of them aren't gonna be there. Why? Their pastors aren't telling them that. Their pastors are encouraging them to go to this Jesus revolution place. This, this to have a great old time. Matter of fact, I guarantee you that they're making it, it announcements in their quote unquote non denominational churches, man, to go in groves to this particular movie. And they're writing all about it. It got a 99% approval on, on, on that, that, that one site. And they just thinking it's the greatest thing in the world. And, and you nut jobs there coming in there and just, just killing their buzzkill. Here you come. Well, I'm okay with that. I heard Dr. Ruckman, he preaching, uh, he was teaching, and uh, I heard him say this. He says, uh, I got a, we got a negative ministry. <laughs> and I thought, well, that's an interesting way to put it. Yeah. He says, uh, because we, we, we just, just come in here like with a sword, like a hammer, and all this fluff and garbage and, and sodomy and, and, and drugs and alcohol that's just being embraced in this jungle music that they've embraced and, and thrown away the Bible and thrown away the hymns and just doing all this nonsense and this craziness and stuff. He says, when you come in, when we come in there, they scatter. They don't, they look at us like we're the bad guys. By verse, verse 3, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. Well, now you're there. He says, by the 1960s, many of the characteristic teachings were gaining acceptance amongst Christians within the mainline Protestant denominations. It said by the 60s, it was already coming apart. I was your, your, right around the time where your United States government said no more Bibles, no more prayer in school. Right. That's when the increase of your Vietnam, you know, uh, uh, involvement right. deal. That's all a Roman Catholic war, by the way, just like the Serbian thing was, and just like World War One. It's all that. Anyway, Bible says, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Speaking of the Antichrist, who will put, and he's going to give you the characteristics of this, of this Antichrist who's coming. Now, it's not my job to try to figure out who he's going to be, because if my Bible's right and I got it right, I'm going to be out of here. He shows up in Revelation six. I'm out of here in Revelation 4. Yep. 
So, yeah, I can tell you that one's coming, and I'll, I'll, you tell me if these characteristics don't match the Jesus revolution and all you charismatic, you know, I would say nut jobs, but I don't want to offend them. Ah, who, verse 4, who opposes and exalted themselves above all that is called God. So the spirit behind that is what you get in Isaiah chapter 14. Who opposes and exalted himself. You see the himself part? Well, that's what you do here. The problem with Victory Baptist Church is your ability to be able to exalt yourself above all that is called God. His ministry, his book, his, his, his way of doing things. You come in and you, you, you kind of just decide when and where you want to be with Jesus Christ. Well, that's coming from this spirit over here. Matter of fact, that's coming why you're why why the average Christian, which you shouldn't, because God didn't give you the spirit of fear. And 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 how many Christians quote unquote suffer from this depression thing? And I can and and they they ostracize themselves and, and that's not Bible. Matter of fact, uh, if you can find it, Dr. Ruckman also preached one of the best messages I've ever heard on the uh, curse of Christianity. And it's based on the prodigal son's older brother who was upset at the fact that everybody paid attention to the prodigal and not to him. And they want to know, well, he wants to know, well, where's my fatted cat? Where's my ring? How come you don't pay attention to me? Where's my deal? Yeah, but you never left the father. See, instead of just getting caught up in your emotions all the time, know that the heart is desperately wicked and deceitful above how many things? All things. So when, you're, when you know to be doing a certain sum and, and, and your entire body, soul, and spirit says no, you got to be able to acknowledge that and overcome it. Jesus Christ made you an overcomer. You should be able to sit up as a man, as a young lady, as a seasoned Christian, or whatever you want to, and be the guy when everybody else is falling away. Now, again, the reason all this nonsense is happening is because those that know to do better, those that know to stay in the Bible, those that know to show up, those that know to win souls, those know to be the light bearer. Lucifer was the light bearer and he dropped it. There's still light bearer, your type of the moon in the Bible. But you don't want to take on the responsibility because there's just so many things, Pastor, and you just got to know that nobody goes through what I go through. Well, there's a guy that's acquainted with grief. That's Jesus. So, didn't he? Is he? you telling me somebody told you that your troubles are so vast that Jesus can't help you. Although the Bible says, and Peter, casting all your cares on him. I got to go with that. I know that's who writes these hymns. When you read these hymns and you sing these hymns, you should, like I used to a long time ago, I used to take those books, so I'd read the hymns. And, you sh and then, then at one point, you know, we've been here for three years or whatever, uh, oh, we started, to, we did a little series on, you know, behind the scenes of these particular hymns. And you realize a lot of these people, man, you know, you could be Fanny Crosby just like that. Now, you wouldn't write any songs about it. You'd be completely out of the ministry. But, but you know, God could have stopped that doctor from pouring that, whatever that was, to blind. She wasn't born blind, by the way. That was an accident. And God said, yeah, go ahead and do it. And used her like he don't use anybody today. Who 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 did God use today? That's a female. Throw a little wrench in it. Oh, the men, the men. You always talk about the men. All right, I'll give you a good one. You ready to go through what she went through to be that testimony? Where after all those years, people are still singing her songs. You want to go that route, or how you want to do that? You know, we're not gonna be a very popular thing because I'm on. I'm going to do what I can to preach this book here. Amen. Now, whether you take it home with you and you decide you're going to change your lifestyle to match the book, we'll never do that. We probably will never be a very big church because it is. The vast majority of people are in the Jesus Revolution. They want to, they're okay with a queer pastor because they, they love watching queers on, on Disney Channel. And they love watching queers and their family members are probably full of them. And they know that they're not going to say nothing about how Jesus Christ can save them out of that lifestyle. It's rare, but you can find people that, that, are, that are homosexual. They're not born that way. Uh, sadly, you know, if you know anything, see, uh, we, we worked with that crew. And I read their files. And most of those homosexuals, man, especially the homosexual sex offenders, which are many, it's usually who they are, by the way. That's where your, your PREA stuff, Prison Rape Elimination Act stuff that's now in all the juvenile programs and all the prisons, that prison rape elimination, well, 
Think about well, who's being raped. It's same-sex rape. And basically what that is, is that just an entire movement to protect the homosexuals and all that. That's, that's what that is. So if you don't know what that is, that's what that is. All right, anyway, verse 4, he says, Who opposes and exalted himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself to be that he is God. Well, that's a spirit, correct? Well, that's the spirit that's here today. Well, the Christians did know better. They're sitting in their seat as God. So they're going to do what they want to do. Again, we've said this over and over. Your Bible says it way before I ever showed up. And uh, like minded preachers, you will never be comfortable in a, in a church like this because we we believe the book, and the book is anti you. Amen. If you don't know that, it's pro Jesus Christ and it's anti you. Amen. And uh, that's the spirit that's coming. And there's a catching away. And the average Christian they can't sit still for a minute. They can't just wait on God. They don't know how to anymore. So so because the Holy Spirit is quenched and grieved. There's no real Holy Ghost power in anything that they do, so they're not going to be exposed like that, so they find other causes, and we go through that like every week. So that's why all these quote-unquote uh, patriotic pushes and let's, let's vote and this, that ain't in your Bible. It's this right here, who, this spirit here, verse 4, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God. So it's not just God, it's all that's called God. So what would that be? It would be whatever God, you know, the things of God. The things as a Bible-believing pastor, I'm trying to get you honed into. It's your what your wife needs to be honed into, what your kids need to be honed into, what you, sister, your husband needs to be honed into the things of God. Why? Because there's a spirit there that's trying to set your husband above that. Sister, he's trying to get you to put yourself above that. Brother, sister, little kids, big kids, whoever you are, teach old fellas, young fellas like myself and Scott. Uh, it's all that. And it's a worship thing. It's a spiritual thing. It's a religious thing. As God. Uh-uh. I'll be like the most high. It's the I will stuff. And we talk about that. But that's, that's here. That's why it's so very easy to have this non-denominal. Well, why not just, instead of kind of, you know, having to have this, this Bunker Hill mentality, Pastor, and, uh, you know, just the, the remnant of a few Bible believers left in, in, in South Florida, why not just take off the Baptist stuff and let's, let's just join. Because if you don't know, the entire spirit behind most of these churches is, well, we all just got to join up. I, I talk to people. Do you? Well, Kyle and I talk to them. And, brother, I'm here to tell you that what comes out of their mouth is antichrist, brother. Uh, instead of trusting that book and putting, knowing and recognizing that the word is above his own name in the book of Psalms there, 138, I think it is. Uh, that that and that we're supposed to learn to study and rightly divide. It's all well. Look, these poor guys, they don't get along with us very well because of their theology. And if they could just get rid of the theology, is what you got in the charismatic movement. It used to though be earlier that these guys were coming in with this nonsense, and they said, you know what? Not here, you won't. And then eventually, birds of a feather fly together. So. You get a few leaving here, a few leaving here, a few leaving here, and then all of a sudden they're like looking for a place to worship. And they say, "Well, let's let's start our own own way of doing things. Let's 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 do our own, uh, you know, whatever." And it was well, we ain't gonna call ourselves Baptists because the Baptists, the, there's called the Baptist doctrine. So if I know you're a Baptist, I know what you believe. If I know you're Jehovah's Witness, I know what you believe. If you say you're a Catholic, I know what you believe. If you say you're a Methodist, I know what you believe. If you say you're a Presbyterian or Nazarite or Nazarene, I know what you believe because of your denomination. It's, it's, I know what a man is. I know what a woman is. I know that's a dog, and I know that's a cat, and I know this is a building. But today, you know what? There, you got, you got uh, both the Republicans and the Democrats sitting there explaining that there is no there's no line there anymore where'd that come from this guy right here god is a god of order folks you know that yep. he's the one that created i didn't create time cuban certainly didn't create time <laughs> and so so you got that thing here and god says it's time and then ecclesiastes sees the book on time and there's a time to chill out and watch all whatever you watch and do whatever you do and there's a time when you got to do something different that god calls you to do and what happens is, like this spirit here, comes in and decides God needs to get up out of here. We ain't got time for this. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta take care of these high places. And we ain't getting into that tonight. We'll close here. But 
it's a it's a mess out there and you don't and, and the church has no power no and, and, and anybody that blinks and has a rainbow flag they're Christians and, and and here you come in with some sound doctrine and some preaching and want to know whether or not they're saved and you're offensive yeah. well what did Jesus Christ do he raised people from the dead and they killed them he fed people and they killed them right. he went to minister to, to everybody a Democrat would say we got to go help the poor and look for you know Judas he, no, Look at verse 5. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? And that's why a lot of this, this, this Bible-believing preaching is like, man, we've heard this 20 times, but you had graduated from me. Yeah, I can't check off. I remember back in the day, we used to do this orientation stuff, and we'd have to do two weeks of training, and then our quality assurance standard, our ACA standards would require an extra however many, many uh, hours of training. So that you could quote unquote say you got that that first year under your belt and this is what it is, and uh, you had we had a skills thing and, and you would be shadowed up or, or, or yoked up with somebody and they would have to put their initials and say you know uh, Bob can open the gate or he knows how to do rounds or he could do a logbook entry without looking silly or whatever he knew how to do the confinement paperwork or or the or the precautionary stuff or whatever the incident reports. And if you couldn't do it, you wouldn't be signed off. And if by chance you couldn't, you couldn't make it out of orientation, we released you. Well, I'm, I'm ready to move on from a lot of my stuff that we go over here uh, for, for three years. And it's like, man, we, it's, it gets, gets a little frustrating. But I'm okay, because Paul says, look, here we are again. At 54 AD, he says, Remember ye not that when I was with you, yet with you, I told you these, these things, verse 6. And now you know that whatsoever holdeth, or, or what, and, and now you know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time, for the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let unto he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed who the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. That's, that's Revelation 19. Now, yeah. now here we go. We'll, 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 uh, we'll close with this. Even him whose coming is after the workings of who? Satan. Satan. All right. So Paul will tell you. Hey, I've already told you this. And I come in, you're all kind of flustered about what we've already gone over. And so here, let me, let me, let me remind you what, where we're at as a Christian. Let me remind you what, what our role is here. And he's going to explain that there's this falling away. And, and he's seen this in, in 54 AD. You're in 2023. And you, you, you can't get a Christian man to pass out a track to, to, to date. They don't do it. You don't even know they're saved. You until you do a funeral or a wedding, and then you find all these people coming out of the way. Hey, guess what? I'm a, I'm a Christian too, dude. I was with you last month. You never mentioned nothing. I, I've been around you for twenty. You never. When did? Okay, so did you get saved last week? No, I, I got saved, man. When I was when I was twenty. And I remember, man, now all these memories come in, and man, you you you're cussing this and dirty foul mouth this and. Exposing kids to that and, and making off-colored remarks towards me. Wow. And you say, but Pastor, what is that today? How does that work? That's, that's where you're at. And so you're talking about the last days. And yeah, it, you say, are you upset at the fact that a Jesus rev? No, because I, I already see how, it's, how, how that Jesus rev, the spirit of the Jesus revolution affects our ministry. There's no need to be consistent with a real, whole lot of anything. What you going to do about it anyway? Well, I mean nothing really. Uh, I know this though: you can't possibly come into a ministry with a double-minded heart and feel anything. But I don't know what you'd feel. What would you feel? You'd feel uh, discouraged, upset a little bit. You would. Uh, I, I I love song sound doctrine. I love, I listen to the strongest preacher. If I listen, if I got to sit and listen to you for an hour, and I leave out of here, and I didn't, I didn't get enough, I get upset. I don't know, what, what, I was a waste. 
I could watch Oprah Winfrey with that, for that one. But it's because you still got an old nature about you, man, that hates Jesus Christ. The one, the one that's tapping into this spirit of Antichrist. This being deceived, and, and but evil, evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. And the average Christian in America, I thank God we're, we're a King James, Bible-believing, Baptist church, and that I would say we're actually head and shoulders. I would put you, I'd put our ministry above most of what I know around here. All those guys, they don't even know. They look at something that's going, they love this, this ecumenical movement, and everybody's, you know, there's no need for this. And yeah, his wife's a pastor too, and you're a pastor, and he's a pastor, and we're all pastors. What pastor do you want to talk to? And it's like, wow, it ain't that. Verse 7, for the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let, and, and, and until he be taken out of the way, they say that's the Holy Spirit. I don't think that's the Holy Spirit. Uh, if Bob said if you're in hell he's with you, right the book of song I, mean, uh, I don't think that's the Holy Spirit they say that the rapture Holy Spirit leaves and I don't think so verse 8 uh, and then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume uh, with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness, and them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause shall, for this cause rather, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth and have pleasure in unrighteousness. Now, I'll close with this. Let me put a little mark on there. I got a pen. Yes. What's the date today? All right, so we, we, we ended here, and we'll pick up that next week. But know this. It ain't getting better. Uh, it's tough to find... It's. It's, it's tough to find men, but when we have a good crew here, it's mostly men. I like that, actually. Um, it's difficult to find com commitment, it's, it's, uh, but, we, but we gotta be that, because otherwise, Dade County, it's so much going on. There's so much going on. You can, be, you can get discouraged. I, I would drive from here to there there's so many people there. I uh, I don't know what to do with them other than, you know, Lord, you got to help me. Otherwise, I'm going to lose my mind. Like, well, what my obligation is. And so really the obligation comes down to be very simple. And you, and you know what? We talked about it before we got dismissed street preaching on Sunday. Do what you know to do. He said, but what is that? You figure that out. Take yourself a little piece of paper to get a pen. Write, write it down. Come up with ten things. You pray. Say, Lord, yes. Can you can you show me ten things that you think I should be doing every day? I mean, unless your your conscience has already been seared, and you know, maybe you're not say a reprobate. I don't know. I, I I'm pretty sure you're gonna you're gonna answer back. Sure, I could help you with that. I'm glad you asked. And then once you you know, once you write that down, then know anything that, that, that comes against between, rather, that and, and, and you. Well, then that would be easy to just, that you can't be ignorant of his devices. Well, that's certainly the devil. And uh, I'll tell you, man, you, the further you get into this, because what this, what this charismatic thing has done is it's just embraced the New Age movement. Right. It's all elements of that, and we'll go over that next week. And then you talk about, you just, I'll tell you what, you just look at the, 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 the age of Aquarius. And, and in the 60s when they sang songs like that and now it's the outer space and all that stuff and you know the, 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 the word planets only shows up one time in your Bible and it's in 2 Kings and you know what the planet stuff it's, it's, worsh, it's, uh, it's connected with worship and it's connected with sodomites well Lonnie Frisbee's a sodomite takes LSD and drugs and everybody embraced him well that's the spirit of Antichrist amen
And it's, uh, it's now all in your theaters, and, and every other Christian seems to be on board with what this movie presents. Are you are you gonna be the one to draw a line, man? And say that you know what? It's not us. We ain't we ain't getting a printing a bus to go there. <laughs> anyway, Father, thank you so much for your son. Thank you for the opportunity to be in church tonight. I ask you to help us, Lord. We got to fight, and we want to stay in this fight. We want to be able to do what you'd asked us to do, and uh, just remember you you've given us the grace and understanding and wisdom, Father, to be that Christian, even when everybody else decides they want to fall away and they want to be part of this Jesus revolution. We, we want to remain that remnant, and we want to remain the Bible believers that you've, you've saved us and called us to be. And Lord, just help us, because it's not easy at times. We get discouraged, and we get sidetracked, and we get caught up in things that are, that are detrimental to our testimony. And Lord, we can get closer to you, and we can learn to love you more, and to spend more time and rightly divide that book. So we could be an effectual witness to these people that so badly need it. And we need it. We need to we need to stay close together. So we love and thank you. We plead the blood. Pray for all them prayer requests, Lord. People that are sick. People that are that are, that are contemplating making the next step. Pray you will be done with all of that. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.